Uh, please state your full name first. Donald Burt Kenny. Uh, where did this incident take place? It took place uh, north and west of Sundry in uh, the year of 1975. Was it at night or day? Daytime. What time of day was it? Roughly a quarter to nine in the morning. Describe the area in which it took place. Uh, it took direct. It took place directly uh, north off a road, completely across a swamp, which I stepped off later to be roughly a distance of 400 to 415 yards. What distance would you estimate you were from the creature when you first saw it? I'd say 430 yards. I'd say another 15 yards difference from the first saw. What was your first reaction? One of surprise, uh, saying to myself, I couldn't believe it, uh, swearing a few words, you know. Mm -hmm. What was it doing? It was walking on a uh, cattle trail that uh, the, uh, the range cows normally use to travel from one area to another. Uh, it was in pursuit of a moose that I just minutes before, less than 10 minutes before, I had shot and knocked down. And the moose had gotten up, and it had, uh, the moose had uh, walked up this hill, and the uh, Sasquatch went after it. Did it stand and walk on two legs? Yes, it did. Did it ever go down on all fours? It did not. Was it covered in hair? It was. What color was it? Uh, reddish brown. How tall would you estimate this creature to have been? I'd say just under eight feet. What would you estimate its weight to have been? I'd say around 425, 430. Did you uh, see any facial features? I did, yes. Could you uh, describe them? Uh, they were like, uh, they're humanoid in nature, but uh, added with that was the fact that there was hair directly around, like around the eyes and around on the chin here. And, and when it walked, it walked uh, like the arms were, uh, the, arm, the length of the arm was below the waist mm -hmm. when it walked and it walked with a walk like with a shuffle. Did you notice the eye color of it? No, I did not. How about anything uh, out, uh, standing out on the nose? It was not a prominent nose. It was not oversized. I would say it was just normally like the humans. It, it wasn't flat. It wasn't long. It wasn't wide or anything like that. I, it just looked to me to be of a normal nature that I see in every day. Did you see its ears? Uh, ears were not visible, no because of the hair. How about the mouth and the teeth? Uh, did not open its mouth, uh, did not bare its teeth. Uh, what it did was when it saw that I saw it, it stood there and turned and looked directly south at me and for several minutes as I looked at it and then uh, all of a sudden it turned away and took off up the hill after the moose. Could you describe the arms? Uh, in what nature? Uh, were they long? Ah, uh, they were. Yes, they were longer than I would. I would estimate longer than than a human's arms. Were they large or uh, uh, the shoulder area? Yes, they were. From about the elbow up to the shoulder, they seemed like they're much more more muscular. Mm -hmm. You know, fill out more. Could you see if it was male or female? I could not tell. No. How long did you see this creature for? I would say from five. I'd say five to, I'd say five, six minutes in there, to be honest. Did it ever make any noise? No, it did not. Uh, uh, my dad, I saw it in plain view. Uh, there was no mistake in what I saw. Did it see you? Yes, it did. What, did, what was it, its reaction? It didn't act startled. It just stopped on the trail as it was proceeding towards where the moose went up the hill. It turned and... And, and looked at me, and I mean eye-to-eye -eye contact for two to three minutes. Did you smell any powerful odor before or during the sighting? Later on, when I had circled the bush to attempt to find a moose, I'd, I'd circle three times, and on the third time, uh, as I was looking for the moose, I come into a little clearing. I looked to the east, I couldn't see anything. I looked to the south, I couldn't see anything. And just as I, uh, I was looking to the left, you know, like uh, how they call that, that type of vision off to your side here, peripheral. Mm -hmm. As I got about here, I could see a pair of eyes looking at me. And from a distance of 30 yards, I, I could smell something. It wasn't out of the ordinary. You know, I'd been in the bush for many years, so it wasn't nothing out of the ordinary. After the creature moved off, did you check the footprints? I did, yes. Didn't find any? I found some in the snow, but they were not very legible because... Uh, 
the manner of the the the, tra the, uh, the uh, range cows that used that trail and uh, the granted there was fresh snow in the swamp that I had to cross the snow was roughly a foot foot and a half deep but because it was wet heavy snow when you got to higher altitude the uh, it was a mossy covering on the ground it was like sponge so that when you walked over it you could turn back and you couldn't see where you were mm -hmm. but on the cow trail itself I did see uh, tracks that are barely visible that was all you know just the seeing the, the out, you know, like the, uh, the toll part of the foot is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The foot was visible to me, but it wasn't very legible. Did you report this to any, uh, to the rangers or the police? No, I did not to any authorities. Because uh, then, as I do now, I don't hold much credibility with these people because all they do is record it and there's not much uh, importance put to it. So I had no reason to want to uh, get in touch with them. And the final question is, in your own words, describe what happened, the incident, like when you first saw what you were doing and what okay. it did. Okay, what happened there was it was roughly, uh, I'd say, 8.30, quarter to 9. I had stopped my car along this rural road. Uh, I'd seen a bull moose in this swamp. It was right almost over on, on the north side of the swamp. I got out of my car. I loaded my gun. I stepped several yards away from my car, off to the ditch. Moose was standing broadside to me. I up and I shot, and the moose fell down. Now the snow was like I said earlier was a foot and a half or so deep, because I found that out later when I walked the moose. Now as the moose went down and all four legs were dangling in the air, I attempted to load my rifle again, reload it. I jammed somehow. I had my shells, my clip behind each other, loaded in the clips, so I had uh, several minutes before I could get it unjammed and reload another shell. And as I reloaded the second shell, I looked up and this moose was getting back up on its feet and proceeding from left to right for me, going uphill and then onto a cow trail. And at the point this moose got onto this cow trail, as it was coming around a semicircle from the west side of this hill around to the south side, and at the very uh, north side of the swamp, uh, the uh, Sasquatch come off of that cow trail, just walked normally, just at a normal gait, and that is when I saw it. When it traveled roughly, I'd say about 30, 35, 40 yards, it stopped, and it saw me as I saw it. Now this lasted, like I said earlier, for several minutes, and at this point, after it uh, stopped looking at me and proceeded after the moose, this is when I checked my firearm and I proceeded across the swamp to check whether there's blood or whatever because my primary interest was getting the moose. Mm -hmm. Now when I checked and there was just a little bit of blood, I figured I'd better go after uh, this moose and see if I couldn't get it. So I proceeded to go up the hill in the direction that the moose and this Sasquatch had taken. Now I was up, I traveled maybe 200 yards or so and uh, I couldn't make up the tracks any farther because as I said earlier, the snow in the swamp was a foot and a half or so deep, and it was heavy wet snow. When you got up higher up on the hill, there was less and less snow, and as you got up higher on top there, there was a green mossy substance that when you walked over, it was like sponge, and I, after 200 yards or so, I could not track them any farther. So what I normally do when I'm hunting, I like to do a, a complete circle, a wide circle, and once I've completed that, then I go a large one, and I completed the second circle and I, I was just going to start the third when, uh, as I said earlier, I come into a small clearing. Uh, the sun was coming in from the east side. I, I looked directly east. I couldn't see no tracks. I couldn't see nothing. No animals, nothing. I looked to my south. I couldn't, uh, to the south. I couldn't see anything either. And for some unknown reason, because I hunted for many years in the bush, there's a sixth sense told me something was there may not have been watching me, but something was there. And as I slowly rotated my head to the left, I could pick up off my peripheral vision off to the left a set of eyes looking at me. And as I looked and I made eye-to-eye -eye contact for the second time with his Sasquatch, I would say it was no more than 30 yards or 90 feet or whatever it was. And it was that point uh, that I, I feared for my own safety. I took the safety off my gun. And at that point, when I started to swing my rifle to the north, the Sasquatch took off, and I assumed it was going to go in a northeasterly direction. Now, 
I aim my rifle for a spot between two big pine trees roughly 10 to 12 inches round. And as I thought the, uh, the uh, Sasquatch was going to go through, I pulled the trigger and fired. Now, unbeknownst to me, after, I, after this had taken place, after I'd shot, I made a circle to see if I could pick up its tracks or it or the moose that I'd early was after. Now, I did not pick it up, uh, pick up the tracks of the moose. I did see where the Sasquatch had headed due north from me, had, had not crossed the northeastern direction the way I thought it was going to when I shot at it. Now at this point, I was uh, somewhat uh, overcome with the situation the way it was. I uh, tried to find the moose for roughly maybe 20 minutes to a half an hour after this, and when I could not find the moose because of the spongy condition of the ground, I proceeded to go back to my vehicle I got in my vehicle and I drove directly home to Calgary and I did not hunt again for the rest of that week. And that's, that's the end of it right there. Uh, when it was moving, was it running or walking? <sighs> Fast gate walk. Fast I did not walk? see it running. No. Okay. Uh, a few years later you came across tracks when you were out hunting again. In 1987, yes. Uh, on, on one occasion in 87, I was uh, roughly eight miles north and uh, roughly 14, 15 miles west of Sundry. And uh, at that time, uh, a member of my family was with me. She did not know, uh, she knew about my seeing the uh, Sasquatch in 75. Uh, she did not know that anything might have been around in that area. And we had hunted roughly a little over two miles north off of the same road in 75 that I'd seen the Sasquatch. And uh, we're, like I say, roughly two miles or a little better away from the road north and up off this cut line. And I happened to stop at a clearing and I happened to look down. And there I could see the, the print of a foot right in front of me to the right. And I saw, I believe, a left print as well when I looked a little harder in the mud because it was in, I believe, November. And at the time when the sun shines on it, it tends to make it softer or look more natural than what it is. But one print was definite, and the other one I had to look a little harder because there was leaves cover on the ground. Mm -hmm. Now, I never mentioned it to the, to the individual that was with me, and uh, we proceeded to hunt for the rest of the day, and uh, that was the end of that. But I knew what I saw before, and I, I figured it was, uh, well, might not have been the same uh, animal, the Sasquatch, but uh, that's basically what I saw in 87. And I believe you... Uh came across uh, later uh, of what you thought might be a bedding area. Uh, that happened later, yes. Uh, my brother was with me uh, and my nephew. Uh, they were off hunting. Now this took place west and north of Rocky Mountain House. I do not honestly know the exact location of where this is because uh, I'd never been there before and my brother and I, we just took back roads that were west and north of Rocky Mountain House. And like I say, I come upon this, this spot where it appeared to me that though there was a bed that an animal had made, it was roughly uh, eight or so feet, six or eight feet round, and it was slightly depressed in the ground, and from the outside to the center of the bedding area was a layer of hair, uh, rusty brown to brown color that was roughly three inches or so in thickness, and directly on the north side of the bed was this tiny little uh, poplar tree that maybe an inch, inch and a half around, and it was right up in a small little meadow, and it was no more than 40 to 50 yards north off of this uh, oil lease road. Mm -hmm. And I thought at the time that it was, that it seemed like it was so close to the color that I'd seen in 75, and the reason I, I'm not in detail about certain things like this is that to me, it's not a priority to me, uh, to me in life, and that if I see it fine, that there's so many disbelievers around that uh, I just took stock mentally of what I saw. I mentioned it to my brother, and I thought, well, at some later date, that, uh, if it'll help somehow, how or someone, that uh, I'll have it recorded or write it down or whatever. Now, hold it. now in '88, I sent you pictures. Mm -hmm. Or '89, I sent you pictures. Now in '88. When I explained that spot that was uh, that I saw in '87, that I saw the two tracks in '88, I was out hunting with a member of the family again, and roughly as the crow flies northwest from the sighting in '87, 
I saw four to five tracks in snow. They'd been made in the snow roughly a week to ten days. The sun had shone on them a little bit, but some two or three of the tracks were clearly uh, you could visible, you could see them, I could tell that they were Sasquatch tracks, somewhat similar to the ones that I'd seen in 87, three quarters of a mile away. And at that time, I just happened to have a camera with me, and I took the pictures, and uh, I forwarded them uh, to you through the mail. And that's basically all that uh, I, you know, saw since 75, like 75, uh, 87 the two times, like the one, the second time with the bed, I'm not even sure that it belongs to Sasquatch, but the hair color and the consistency of the hair, and to this day, I don't know why, I did not pick up some of that hair and bring it back with me. It's still there as far as I know. Mm -hmm. So that's basically my story. Okay.